Hello, space fans. So, you join me today in uh, Boca Chica, and we have in front of us the uh, Starship Super Heavy full stack. If you're familiar with the Starship, this one might look slightly unusual. There's no heat shield and no fins. I've got solar panels on there. That's because this is intended to be a depot Starship. Uh, so, the reason I'm launching a depot Starship and not a regular one, I'm interested in the uh, Artemis moon mission. So, I'm going to explore how that might look. This is NASA's uh, idea of how the uh, Artemis moon mission will go. So this represents six launches here, and you can see the first one is this, is the depot starship. Uh, so this goes into orbit, and then these four, four tankers launch one after the other, and they refuel it. This will burn most of its fuel getting into orbit. We'll refuel it with a bunch of tanker starships. Each of those tanker starships, they'll launch, rendezvous, dock, refuel, keep a bit of fuel for themselves, undock, descend, and be caught back in this tower. That is the plan. A pretty incredible plan, but uh, pretty sure SpaceX can do it. Uh, so I want to match the SpaceX profile as much as possible. So uh, this is some literature from their Starship manual online. And it says up to 500 kilometer circular orbit. So that's what I'm going to aim for. Uh, so I have a flight plan. This is my flight plan. Uh, so I've got this by watching various um, Starship launches. Frequently, Seco, which is Starship engine cutoff or second engine cutoff, comes at about 200 kilometers altitude, and then the, the craft is in a transfer orbit, which takes it up to the target altitude, at which point the engines fire again to circularize their orbit. So the key is um, hitting a perigee of 200 kilometers when you cut the engines. So how are we can do that? Well, first of all, we need to know VP, the velocity at perigee. It's easy enough. You can look it up online. This is the equation to calculate the velocity at perigee. Uh, this is the um, radius at perigee, the radius at apogee. Those radiuses are not 200 and 500 because they're measured from the center point of the Earth. GM is the Earth's gravitational constant. Again, you can look that up and you can look up the radius of the Earth. Uh, so I've done that. That's how I've encoded this equation in, in my uh, in my script it's going to fly this craft there's my target apogee target perigee there's a gravitational constant radius of earth so add the radius to uh, the 200 and the 500 all, all these are in meters of course and in fact it, uh, I name my variables uh, with the units as the as the, the start of the variable so uh, we've got some other values here Raptor engines exhaust velocity calculated from in-game telemetry and mass in tons lost per second. So that's tons per second mass loss rate, 3.4. And again, I just got this by, you know, reaching orbit uh, without using my automation and uh, measuring the telemetry. And these values we'll need in uh, in the rocket equation, which we'll come to. But you can hear, you see here this final line. This is actually exactly this equation here, the square root of two times the um, Earth's gravitational constant, etc. So we now know how fast we need to be traveling when we get here. So if we can manage to get to this point, traveling at this this speed VP, but with vertical speed of zero and altitude of 200 kilometers, we've done the hard bit. We've pretty much got there. Uh, so I've got three computers here, one in the Starship, one in the Super Heavy, there's even one in the crane or the tower waiting for a catch. It's not going to be doing that today. Oh, well, it will do the uh, the super heavy. So the super heavy here, let's fire this up. What this uh, computer is mainly concerned with at the moment is waiting until uh, at this spot on the Earth is in the right position to launch into an orbit that's going to match the inclination of the moon in about 10 days. Now I say that I can't launch into the plane of the uh, moon's orbit because um, I'm using Principia mod and that simulates the non-spherical gravitational field of the Earth, which means that um, low Earth orbits will precess, which means they'll actually s slightly move around the planet. They won't they won't stay in the same place. Like the moon's orbit is pretty fixed. It doesn't precess very much, um, but a low Earth orbit and all low Earth satellites are subject to this will precess by about six or seven degrees a day. 
So I'm actually launching into an orbit that's at 70 degrees intercalation to the moon because 10 days from now is when I think the, uh, the crew starship will launch and want the fuel. So you have to think ahead. So uh, do we have everything we need? We do not quite have everything we need and I'll tell you why. So what have we calculated so far? We know what horizontal speed we need. We know what altitude we need. In order that our vertical speed reaches zero at the precise moment, uh, because you know we're going to be climbing up until we hit that point. So we want vertical speed before that. And we want it to be zero when we hit that point. So how do we calculate that? Well, we need to know the amount of time it's going to take us to reach our horizontal speed. And this is where we use the rocket equation. So here's the rocket equation. This, uh, this differs from your normal force equals mass times acceleration because uh, you're actually converting mass into force when you burn rocket fuel and spit it out the back. Your vehicle's losing mass and using that mass to produce force. So this is a slightly more complicated equation. This is uh, the delta in velocity. So this is, we know the delta V because we'll know what velocity we're at. We'll know what velocity we need to be at. The difference between the two is the delta. It's the exhaust velocity, which you saw I'd already calculated from in-game telemetry. And this is the natural log of starting mass over finishing mass. So what we're really finding out here, because I have all the values I need except finishing mass. So in fact, I'm, I'm, I use this to calculate finishing mass. And the other value I got from in-game telemetry was mass loss per second. So if I know finishing mass, current mass, and how much mass I lose per second, then I know the time at which I'm going to hit the target velocity. So now I have that. <clears throat> That's this value along here, time to target. I can just use a simple right angle triangle because a right angle triangle, the area um, is the altitude we, we have left to gain. This is the delta altitude. This is our target vertical speed. And as time progresses, target vertical speed will decrease until at this moment, that's when we hit the perigee, we cut the engines, we're in the transfer orbit, we coast to 500 kilometers. Easy. Uh, and this is it in code. So unlike the horizontal speed, which I calculate once at the beginning, target vertical speed, I cal calculate multiple times during the flight. And as it turns out, that's quite handy. Uh, because what I did discover, and we'll see it in a second once, once we get up there, is that um, it's very difficult to actually get to that target vertical speed. All I have to control the vertical speed is the angle, attack, uh, angle of attack of the craft. So if I pitch up, I'm going to increase my vertical speed. And if I pitch down, I'm going to decrease my vertical speed. Or at least that's how I was thinking about it initially. And in fact, that's not quite right. What the angle of attack gives me as a lever of control is really just a method of change uh, of affecting the rate of change of my vertical speed. When we're up there, we're going to be on a roughly ballistic trajectory. Oh, we're going. I'll keep talking as we're going up. This might get loud. Uh, th this this actually happened just two days ago. SpaceX did um, a static fire of this massive engine cluster. Uh, so they'll be attempting an orbital flight soon, I'm sure. But for the moment, all we have is graphics. So at the moment, I'm not using any of the, any of the maths I just talked about. Uh, the rocket equation doesn't really work in the atmosphere. Uh, it, it doesn't take into account drag. Uh, but we'll have stage separation basically in a very, very thin part of the atmosphere. Um, and that's when I'll start the calculations. It will be the Starship computer that does all those calculations. Uh, this one is just doing a gravity turn and it's really just adding degrees um, to to its angle over, over a period of time. There's, there's not much uh, calculation that goes into it. All it really wants to do is get the Starship above the thickest part of the atmosphere with a decent whack of speed and the Starship can handle the rest of it from there. So I'll try and explain um, what I had to do in the end. Uh, when I first tried this with all the information I've just told you about, I thought that's it, I have it nailed. 
Um, but of course, there's this huge difference between the target vertical speed and the actual vertical speed um, when the super heavy releases the Starship. And I can't use the angle of attack simply to make them match. I, I tried that and it was horrible. Uh, very, very inefficient. Uh, the Starship looked like a nodding dog. It was all over the place. So the solution I came to in the end, and uh, uh, incidentally, um, I, I thought all of this through myself. I, I'm aware that people make videos showing you techniques, uh, but I, I just wanted to figure it out from first principles. It's, it's what makes me happy. So that's what I did. So I, I found myself with this problem where the target and actual vertical speeds were, were way off, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't align them. I couldn't get one to the other, and I was thinking I'm going to have to do something like a calculate an area under a curve because if I've got a fixed vertical speed and a, and a, and a fixed area in this in this diagram that, uh, which is you know the altitude I need to gain, and, I, and that I, I wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> but in the end, and here we go. So now we'll now we'll see it in action. Here's my target vertical speed, just over 800 meters per second. My actual vertical speed is nearly a kilometer a second. So in the end, what I found worked uh, because what I don't want to do is make great big changes to the attitude of the spacecraft. That's very, very inefficient. Um, so in the end, what I did, oops, and I'll show you the code. I mean, I won't put this on for very long because it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, oh no, not that one. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. What I'm doing here, and uh, don't feel you have to read all of that. I'm looking at the delta. Uh, I'm looking at the delta between actual vertical speed and target vertical speed. So here it is, is the delta. 144, 143. So I know the delta, I also know my time to target velocity. So what's actually happening here is... Um, I'm telling my craft to adjust it, adjust its pitch by really, really tiny amounts. If I bring up that code again, I'm having it change its angle of attack by 0 0.02 degrees on each cycle. Um, and what it's doing is it's calculating at what point the delta is going to get to zero, and it's using the angle of attack to control the rate at which the delta decreases so the delta will hit zero just a few seconds before we hit our our target velocity and and basically that's it that's that's how I got it to work uh, I mean I struggled with this for some time but it does now work uh, using exactly that method I, I, there's probably better methods but this works very very well for me and I'm very pleased with it so I think what we'll do now is uh, watch it from here and you can see, and what I will do is lower Principia's calculations, otherwise you see all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so I'll speed this up, and we can just watch how over the next four minutes uh, the firing of the engines expands this future trajectory until it, until it wraps all the way around the planet. Alright, let's watch. Okay, so we've got like less than 20 seconds now until we hit our target velocity, so I'm just going to zoom out and let's watch. I might have to adjust a bit of Principia. There we go. Shows you most of the orbit. I think that's probably still going. There we go. There we go. It's going around the Earth. Let's watch this chap get his uh, solar panels out. Now he's in orbit. Also put some running lights on because... Uh, it's very, very dark around the other side of the planet. So that's it. Seco, we've hit Seco. Uh, we're just passing over Florida. We've just gone over the Gulf of Mexico. There's Florida down there. There's Miami, Space Coast, Orlando, Tampa. Pushing my American geography knowledge. Um, and there's the Gulf of Mexico behind us. Let's go out and see how we did. I'm going to have to. Uh, here we go. That will show us a bit more. So Perigee, 199.8 kilometers, pretty good. Apogee, slightly high, 504 kilometers. But the, the thing is about this, uh, when, when we go on and do uh, sort of docking maneuvers, for example, it, it will change the parameters of the orbit wildly. I can lose or gain like 50 kilometers. It's very, very fragile, these, uh, these circular orbits. So, you know, it doesn't pay to try and be 
too exact. Uh, but the nice thing about a circular orbit is it makes it much easier to rendezvous. So, you know, we want to try and get it as close as we can. Uh, so what I'll do now, this would be a 45 minute wait. Uh, so I'm just going to speed up time. So it's just coasting now. The Starship's weightless, just waiting to uh, get all the way into Apogee. When we get to Apogee, it's going to fire its engines again. Try and circularize the, or the orbit. Uh, I'm just trying to play with the speed controls. I can't hit Apogee while, while we've got time speeded up. It won't work. OK, so we're about to get there. Once we hit Apogee, it's going to fire its engines again, and it should push out this side of the orbit, which is currently at 200 kilometers. Uh, watch for the throttle up here. This is all automated, it's all hands off. I'm not doing anything. All controlled by the script. Here we go. Throttle up and let's watch the orbit. You see this side pushing out? Bam, look at that. And there we go. And now 504, 507 that looks pretty circular to me. I'm happy with that. <laughs> uh, so here's our chat. Just come around to the uh, sunny side of the planet in a lovely circular orbit. He doesn't have much fuel on board now. Let's have a look. This is the amount of fuel left. Most of the fuel has been expended. So uh, you, you can see why it requires all of these um, tankers to launch up and refuel the depot. The, the depot's expended almost all of its fuel to get here. And it'll be the same with the tankers. The tankers will come up. This is how much fuel they'll have on board. They'll put most of that on, uh, keeping a tiny, tiny bit for themselves uh, because it's a powered descent into the tower arms uh, at, at the very end when they come back. But, you know, the, the beauty of this system is it's 100% reusable. I mean, I say 100% the depot starship. That can't come back. There's no uh, no heat shield. Uh, but the tankers, um, massive, massive vehicles. Uh, and, you know, the plan is to send them up to space and then recover them in, entirely whole. I mean, it's much bigger than the space shuttle. It's uh, an incredible achievement if they manage it. Uh, so the last thing I'll show you is let's put on the orbit of the moon. Here's the orbit of the moon. That's where we're headed. But as you can see, our orbit is very different to the moons. The, the inclination is, is, is very, very different. But we can use Principia, um, which is, uh, Principia is fantastic, by the way. Uh, the original game would use patched conics, which is what I'm displaying down here. Uh, we, that, basically, that's um, uh, an ellipse around any planet. Um, and, and while that's a nice, simple model, um, it means you can't do a lot of things, like you can't orbit uh, Lagrange points, you can't have one of those near rectilinear halo orbits, uh, all kinds of orbits that you can't have if you're just using uh, a patched conic simulation. So Principia is a, you know, what they call an n-body uh, simulation. As well as that, it also models the non-spherical gravitational field, field of the Earth. And the reason that is important is, uh, well, I mean, A, it allows sun synchronous orbits. I'm not getting into those here, but I have to take account of it because I want this depot to be roughly aligned with the moon in about 10 days time. Uh, I'm calculating two days between each launch. So in 10 days, I want this to be aligned with the moon. So we can use Principia to look into the future and it should display the orbital precession that we'll be subject to. So there you go. I've sent, I've asked Principia to look into the future. I think that's probably as far as it can look. But you can see how the orbit is going to change from here and process round to here, which is much closer. I guess it's probably as far as it will go. Um, so hopefully, and we're not there yet, we'll, in, in 10 days, we'll be nicely aligned with the moon and our crew starship can head off to the moon. So what I'll be covering in the next video is um, launch a tanker into the 500 kilometer circular orbit, rendezvous with the depot, refuel the depot, Keep a bit of fuel back in the tanker, undock, descend, re-enter, navigate back to Boca Chica and a powered descent where I'm finally caught by the uh, arms of the tower. Easy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I've been Real Time Spaceman, signing off.